when I say he froze, I mean myself. Friends, cause I can't redeem myself. Bye. Shalom, shalom. This is El Dayil for One Nation, One Power. Coming back to you once again. You know, the Most High has impressed it upon my heart to come to you today to show you, according to Scripture, according to this Bible, what a bastard really is. You know, I've been hearing all of these Israelites out there throwing the word bastard around and who's a bastard this and a who's a bastard that. Well, today, I'm going to show you, through the Holy Spirit, the proper breakdown of what a bastard is according to the Bible, and not what a bastard is according to what a lot of teachings that have went forth out here in Babylon, coming from different Israelite camps. They are teaching a doctrine that a bastard is anybody that have a child with anybody outside of their own nation. That child's a bastard. Well, I'm here today to let you know that's a flat-out false doctrine and a lie. And I'm going to prove it to you today according to Scripture. Now, let me lay the foundation for this, and then I'm going to hit you with some Scriptures. And I'm going to show you that that doctrine is a lie. So everybody out there that's under that spirit, uh, 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 that bastard spirit, thinking your child is a bastard, after you watch this video, you're going to know for sure your child is not a bastard according to what the Bible got to say. And I challenge anybody out there to try to disprove what I'm about to show you today. If you can disprove what I'm about to show you today, I will be loved to be corrected. But you better bring scripture to prove my scriptures wrong. Bring your strong reason and strong argument. Now, let's, uh, let's start off. We're going to start off with Lot. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Go with me, brothers and sisters. You got to learn what a bastard is according to the Bible. Not according to what people think, not according to what people feel, and not according to their philosophy. And sure, not according to what they heard. Let's see what the Bible got to say what a bastard is. Now remember, when this Bible was put together, God had this all written down because it was given to holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to give you some bit of advice that most people out there don't know. God don't speak with periods and commas. The interpreters, when they wrote this down, did their best to put periods and commas in where they thought periods and commas should be. But remember, I'm going to show you something because in some passages of scripture, you can't stop at the period. Because if you stop at the period in some passages of scripture, it'll throw off the whole text. And you won't get the understanding of what the text is talking about. That's why the Bible is always talking about precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. That's how you avoid them pitfalls and them traps when it comes to periods and commas in your Bible. Remember, the Most High God never talked with periods and commas and colons. He just simply talked as men were moved by the Holy Spirit and wrote it down. Now, when it was translated, men translated it, so they put in periods and commas where they thought periods and commas should be. Now you're going to get the proper breakdown today of what a bastard is according to your Bible. Go with me to Genesis chapter 19, and we'll begin at verse 20. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 20. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 20. Get your pencil and your paper out. Because all of you out there that are sitting under that spirit of condemnation that you might be having a bastard in your life, you're going to find out you don't. Genesis 19 and 30. And Lot went up to Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor and, the, and, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Now this is telling the story about Lot afraid to live in Zor because Zor was just as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot was afraid to go down there. So Lot took his children, which any man would do, and got the hell out of there, went up and, and got in a cave, trying to live separate from the wicked people down in Zor. 
verse 31. And the verse firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, verse 32, let us make our father drink wine, and he will lie with him, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Verse 33, and they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Verse 34, and it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I will lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. I'm going to read that again, verse 36. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Both of the daughters of Lot were pregnant with children in their stomachs by their father. This is what you call incest. This is against the Levitical laws of, of the, the book of Leviticus. Are you with me? This is against the laws of God. This is incest. So Lot's two daughters got him drunk and then laid with him and he know nothing about it. And then now they pregnant. Let's keep going. Verse 37. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The first son was called Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. So the first child, being the older daughter, had the first son and he was a Moabite. He became the father of the Moabites. Let's keep going. Verse 38. And the younger... She also bare a son and called his name Benami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So now we got the children of Ammon and the children of Moab being the children of incest from Lot. Follow me. Let's go now to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, we don't have to assume what a bastard is. The Bible will tell us what a bastard is if we simply read the Bible to get the understanding through the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to read verse 1 to verse 3. I'm going to read verse 1 to verse 3 without the periods and the commas. I'm just going to read starting at verse 1 down to verse 3. And I want you to open up your spiritual ears. And I want you to hear what the Bible is saying, what a bastard is. Are you ready? Get ready. Get your Bible. You got to go with me on this. It's going to set somebody free out there. Deuteronomy 23, verse 1 through 3. And I'm about to begin. Are you ready? It's going to set you free out there. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Did you hear what a bastard is? The Bible just told you what a bastard is. A bastard is a child born out of incest. That's why it gave you the names of Ammon and Moab. That's why it repeated and it said the first time. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 23, 1 through 3. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Watch this. How do I know 
that that's the proper interpretation and breakdown of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1 through 3. How do I know it? Now let me prove it. Remember, Lot's two daughters slept with their father. They had children. One son was named Moab. The other one was named Ammon. The children of the Moabites and the children of the Ammonites. So when you read Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1 through 3, it gives you the breakdown and tells you what a bastard is. A bastard, once again, is children out of incense. Now let's prove it. Go with me to 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 11. Let's prove it. Because when you say it any other kind of way, watch this. 1 Kings 1 and 11. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Higgah, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it? Now I read 1 Kings 1 and 11 for a reason. 1 Kings 1 and 11 told you that Bathsheba is King Solomon's mother. Now, at this time in Israelite history, we were not intermarrying with people of other nations. Now, Bathsheba was King Solomon's mother. Now, let's establish something else. Go with me, 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, and 2 Samuel chapter 2, chapter 12, verse 24. Forgive me. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her. And she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. And the Lord what? This is 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Bathsheba had a son by David, and it tells you that the Most High loved him. His name was Solomon. Now, wait a minute. Uriah was a Hittite, which at this time, the nation of Israel, was not intermarrying with people of other nations. But David stalked Bathsheba, got Bathsheba pregnant. The Most High killed the first child, but then the second child, the Most High let him have and called his name Solomon. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses one, two, three, one, two through three. Now remember, David married Bathsheba her husband was a Hittite. The Bible does not give you an identifying marker of which tribe Bathsheba came from, but if her husband was a Hittite and they was Africans, what do you think she was? By the way, the Hittites were the nation that we were forbidden to get involved in with. Why? If you go back to the table of nations in Genesis chapter 10, they are descended from Nimrod. They are the people who the Most High said, you shall not make marriages with them because they will cause you to depart from your God and you begin to serve other gods. The Hittites were a part of that lineage that came down through Nimrod worship. That's where in the book of Jeremiah you get the queen mother of heaven, heaven Semiramis. Are you with me so far? Our people fell to these gods. But back to what I was saying, Bathsheba had to be a Hittite. Her husband was a Hittite, and they had children before Solomon. Uriah and Bathsheba had children. Do you hear me? So, if we read Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1, 2, 3, like all of the rest of the Israelites out there teaching it, King Solomon would be a bastard. King Solomon, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1 through 3, with the period in there, King Solomon's a bastard. But when you remove the period, because it never stopped talking, let's prove it once again. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1 through 3. Let's see what a bastard is. I'm just going to read it. King Solomon wasn't no bastard, even though David took Bathsheba, who had to be a Hittite, because she was married to a Hittite 
who had children by a Hittite. Come on out of here. Deuteronomy 23. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Why? These are children of incest. David, when he had Solomon by Bathsheba, who had to be a Hittite at that time. Watch this. How you know she was of a, had to be a woman of another? God killed the first child. Why did the Most High kill the first child? Didn't he just say, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord? So obviously Bathsheba, by this time, had, by being a woman from another nation, they had King Solomon. So if I go and read Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1 two, through 3, like the rest of these Israelites are out there teaching, King Solomon is a bastard. You make him a bastard if you teach that doctrine. And we know good and well King Solomon wasn't no bastard. He was the wisest man of his time. That's right. And Bathsheba had to be a Hittite. That's right. Uriah was King David's mighty man. One of his mighty men. That's right. Who gave his life for King David. He was a Hittite. And his wife was a Hittite. Had to be a Hittite. That's why David got punished. See, that's why over 500 of our books got burned up. They're trying to hide this knowledge. So we out there calling people's children bastards who the Bible don't say are bastards. A bastard, once again, is a child born in incest. That's what your Bible says. That's not what I say. The Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 23, told you what a bastard is. Told you first a bastard shall not enter into the congregation for 10 generations. And then turned around and told you what a bastard is. An Ammonite or a Moabite. Children born out of, out of incest like Lot's daughters and their father. That, my friend, is the proper breakdown of what a bastard is. So, with that said, keep on calling people out there bastards because you are normally calling King Solomon a bastard. And King Solomon, the most high, loved it. So, you know what I'm saying? This, my friends, is just a quick, short video on what a bastard is. And I dare anybody out there challenge me on, on what a bastard is. Bring me some scriptures. Because I got news for you. There's only two places in the whole Bible, three places where the word bastard is even used. I wonder why is that? You think the Most High God cared about what we thought about children being bastards? So he only said it three times? I don't think so. I believe they removed a lot of that passages of scripture that deal with illegitimate children. That's right. And what a bastard really is. Because in Deuteronomy 23, 1 through 3, once again, he that is wounded in the private, he that is wounded in the stones, forgive me, or hath his private member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter and to the congregation of the Lord, an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Forever. Put a statement on the whole three verses. Forever. That's what a bastard is, my friend. He gave you the description. An Ammonite or a Moabite. These are children of incest. If you're not having children by your daddy, your child not a bastard. That's right. So, once again, this is El Dayu from One Nation, One Pop. Let me give you those passages of scriptures one more time before I get out of here. I want you to write down Genesis chapter 19, verse 30 through verse 38. I want you to write down Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 through 3. 
Just read Deuteronomy chapter 23, just like it reads, verse 1 to 3, without stopping at the period. Because if you stop at the period, it will leave room for uh, error. It will leave room for people to assume what a bastard is. When the Bible just told you what a bastard is. Children born out of incest. Then you can go over to 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 10, where it tells you uh, that the sword is never going to depart out of David's house because he has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite, whose name was Bathsheba. And then you can go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife and went in unto her and lay with her and, and she bare a son. And he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. You can go to 1 Kings 1 and 11. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Just showing you that Bathsheba is the mother of Solomon. Her husband was a Hittite. There was no uh, nations mingling with nations at this time. King David was the judge. He was the officer. He was the prophet. King David stepped outside of what he wasn't supposed to do, and he went out there and got him a hit type. That's right. That's why the thing displeased God so bad that King David had to pray that the Most High take not the Holy Spirit from him. It was more than just him killing Uriah. He took a woman of another nation, and they buried King Solomon. And according to a lot of teachings out there, that would make King Solomon a bastard. But seeing how King Solomon wasn't called a bastard after David had a child by Bathsheba, then the Most High said he loved him. That, my friend, just put a dagger in the false teaching of what a bastard is. This is El Dayer from One Nation, One Power, giving all praises to the Most High Ahia, his son Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom. Wow.